So um, today I bring to you guys a concern. I know you guys, we've been in contact for over a few years now. And what I've always came to you guys with, um, on behalf of the Beneficiary Trust Council waitlisters, our Kupuna cannot make it, our six districts, which they do make our Sunday meetings for the last five years or so, but now it's been getting, getting increasingly because of the occupation that is taking place on the Mauna. So today again, once again, it's like the maybe seven or eight time within the last two years I came to you guys with the Aina Mauna Legacy. The Aina Mauna Legacy, you guys should already be informed. In the back, there's a support letter. Support letter is coming from OHA, um, OHA, Queen Lilio Kalani Trust, Hawaii Economic Development Boards, um, the Chambers of Commerce, and the uh, Army, and the Royal Orders. So all of these things are already supported um, back in 2009. So Uncle Sunny Kaniho is the only applicant waitlister that got on the land. Um, Uncle Sunny Kaniho has the only house lease on the land. And so the Ainamana Legacy, which was brought forward to us through Uncle Joe Tasso, Auntie Moani, and those kupuna. They put this book in our hands five years ago, talking about the solution, actually predicting what's gonna happen up on the Mauna. That's actually what they were doing when they gave us the Aina Mauna legacy. So this Aina Mauna legacy is your guys' fiduciary duty as, as well as the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. So a few years back, we've came down to Oahu many times to your board meetings, and we also give you guys a Koakia e-pilot program for the Humuula Sheep Station. It was an over-review of the Aina Mauna legacy, which we, as Moko Okeave waitlisters and homestead associations, had meetings up on Mauna Kea with DHHL. I'm pretty sure you guys are all aware. Isla was there, and the department with Joby Mazagatani. So within this proposal, this proposal lays out just a small fraction of what the community access of Section 211 in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, which is the purpose of a community pastoral. So it's listed in a red, and uh, it's a red, if you guys look inside your guys' book, it's already color coordinated in red and yellow um, sections, but in that section, it basically states um, the 2,000 acres on the left-hand side, which would be used for community pastoral. Um, to be determined for homestead and other, use, and other use programs. But we wanted to focus in on the community aspect. And because there has been only one um, community pastoral ever in the 100 years it's in a Moloka'i, um, we don't have that out in uh, Moko Keawe and on the other islands, which we highly do. Um, we know it's discrimination because you guys can't be doing just these things on certain islands or only one-time deals. So these things, um, what Uncle Sunny Kaniho and the uh, Beneficiary Trust Council Kupuna for over the years living on the uh, Moko Keawe, they wanted to address these issues. And so when we put up Haleoku Hill, um, you, guys were in, you guys were aware of the things that we were doing and we promised um, three things that came off of a certified DHHL meeting. Um, we voted on four things to be immediately immediately effective after that meeting. One, gorse removal, which you guys spend money on and that you guys should be looking into these things. So gorse removal was one. The second one was accelerating homesteads. Number two, I mean number three was security. And number four, or shall I say three, was community access to pastoral and commercial use. So these four things that we already voted through a consultation of beneficiaries was neglected. Not only neglected, so when we decided to erect Haleoku Hill, it was to bring forth the data that the university and the state of Hawaii and OHA and DHHL has failed to do in a span of X amount of years to improve the roads, to have these data to be safely for our homesteads and the use of natives to these parcels were being neglected. So our historical, uh, the, the, the data that we have collected, a little bit data. So the historical Humula sheep station that was burnt down, that was burnt down by Mr. Pacheco, ex DLNR agent that runs a tourism up there. But only now that we brought it to light after they burnt it down, a historical site, there was no investigation of this. And that was just, one issue of non-natives. And so we have this other issue of the data that we collected going up the Mauna. 
it's so astronomical that when we put a fee on it, we actually have income to sustain our Native Hawaiians in these ventures. And I don't believe, I don't believe you guys have been keeping track of a lot of these things, even though you guys already are committed. So this is just reaffirming you guys' commitment for the betterment of the Native Hawaiians and their community and their families. But we have this issue now at Mauna Kea that people um, in, in high places uh, that need to speak up. So you guys, OHA, you guys have a fiduciary duty to speak up for the waitlisters who have not have access to homestead use and to homesteads. So, Haleoku Hill, we need to have a full investigation. How did that play out? Because that is theft of a community. That is a community sector that we all sponsored waitlisters on this moku to bring forth the data. We have the data of the cars, and we know that the lua is insufficient since the 80s or even before. So the income of traffic and carbon footprint to that mauna is insufficient. So when we start putting up these parking lots and we start doing these, these um, other recreationals, we have no accountability to these things. And the state already had an obligation to do this. So now we're looking at government officials doing extreme measures, forcefully taking our property more than one time. We had it done twice. And so these are the, the concerns that we need you guys to, um, to put an end to. We need you guys to put an end to this. So we need you guys to actually start inquiring an audit upon Ige and his financial um, disclosures with the Long family, yeah? That's creating this kind of things that OHA has to support. And not only that, the Lions case with DHHL and William Isla, the way he conducts himself, these things are uncalled for. We need professional clarity. We do not want trustees or these other CEOs in these Native Hawaiian positions that want to attack, steal, and lie about things that we know. We have the map in my backpack. This is what we carry. We know who owns the road. But we can't be having people pull up now, four years after the data is already collected, and start telling a story. Our kupuna already worked the tireless hours and the overnights to have these data. And that's all we humbly um, ask of you guys is to reach out to our kupuna to see all of these illegal things that have been done to us and help us get the Aina Mauna legacy on its track. And um, we need graveyards, yeah? We need graveyards for the beneficiaries because the list is getting longer. Every day pass, we lose loved ones. So that can, I'm, I can just humbly ask you guys to relook at your Aina Mauna legacy, um, documents that we've gave you guys over the years, and let's implement it because uh, we've done the work and we just need your guys' help to push forward on this. We mahalo. Thank you. Our next presenter is Kalani Akea Wilson, also representing the Beneficiary Trust Council and Kanaka Ranger. Aloha, lokahi, olu, olu, ha, 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 nui. Aloha e, aloha e, aloha e. I'm Hawaiian, I'm a beneficiary, and that's how you would present and honor one of our kumu, kupuna, and tipilahi paki. Yeah, and to me, when I see non-beneficiaries talking before the Hawaiian OHA without allowing our kupuna beneficiaries to speak, that's just downright disrespectful in our Hawaiian culture. Kupuna always comes first, is what I learned. So hopefully next time you guys start any meeting from now on, you honor King Kalakaua's composition of the Hawaiian Kingdom National Anthem, Hawaii Pono'i. And everybody rise and everybody sing 
King Kalau Power's composition that was meant for the foundation of international relations with the Hawaiian Kingdom. And every time you guys don't do that, it's disrespectful to Moku Okeave, Pu'u Ohau, where the Ohana is residing. So please um, start the meetings off right um, with Oli, with Mele from our kings and queens, and not just Christian Pule, because not everybody um, agrees with what Christianity did in our Hawaiian community. So today, I'm going to share with you guys um, a few concepts. Uh, just remember this throughout my presentation. Genocide is a system of coordinated attacks. Americanization always seeks to replace Hawaiian control over all Hawaiian things. Um, and that results into government corruption today. Um, civil rights violations and discrimination under U.S. constitutional uh, constitution. So I'll give you guys the context and history. 1843, Hawaiian Kingdom established. 1893, illegal overthrow. Everything from there um, is illegal. So brother, like talk about trauma. Let's talk about 127 years of trauma. Not just last year from the eruption. Because that's what's hurting everybody today. Hawaiians kupuna continue to die on the Hawaiian homelands list. Hawaiian teens have the highest rate of suicide today. They're not even living to be adults. 1902, Prince Kuhil, he opens up the Royal Order of Kamehameha. 1905, the County of Hawaii. 1918, Hawaiian Civic Clubs. 1920, 21, Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. That's Prince Kuhil, Kalaniana Ole, heir of the Hawaiian Kingdom. How come everybody leaving? Standing up. 1959, you guys got to remember where you guys come from, yeah? Is the Constitution of the State of Hawaii, which embeds the obligation of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act in their constitution. Yeah, so the year after that, um, Department of Transportation, DLNR, UH, they all start mismanaging Mauna Kea. They all start stealing. They all start making money, and the money doesn't go to you guys, to UH, doesn't come to the beneficiaries. Where is all this money going? $80,000 per viewing hour, times 13 telescopes. You guys come up with the numbers. That's big numbers. Hawaiians should have free tuition, housing, health care, meal cards, to attend all universities on all islands. 1978, OHA, you guys were created. But you guys have an obligation to the 1959 Statehood Constitution. You guys have an obligation to the 1920 Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, which is an act for rehabilitation of the 1893 illegal overthrow. But you know, I know one thing you guys funded since 1978, uh, federal recognition. You guys been funding that in the millions and every time fail. I hope we're not gonna go through that again. Twenty fourteen Beneficiary Trust Council, Kanaka Ranger, we began work on Mauna Kea. Twenty fifteen BTC Kanaka Ranger. We went into the UH system, changed every campus, put up an ahu and an inverted flag to talk about the trauma we've been receiving for over 127 years that you guys seem to neglect. 2017, BTC Kanaka Ranger, DHHL Homestead Association President meeting with DHHL on the three things. Accelerated Homestead, Security, Gorse Control, uh, Pastoral One. 2018, March 26, 2018, we put up uh, Haleo Kuhio, we start to collect the data on the road because we knew we owned the road. Because before any of this, we spent five years going to all the Homestead Association meetings, learning from all the kupuna involved with the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act on this island. But then, so that's what we were presenting. We went to our kupuna first, see what the concerns were, try to put them all together, package them into one, Nice package, but we're not getting support. 2019, Trustee Le Ahu Isa signed the Beneficiary Trust Council Rehabilitation Resolution 
which said we're going to move forward with putting a tow boot on Mauna Kea Access Road. So we're still waiting for a meeting. We went down there, we asked for a meeting with the Beneficiary Advocacy Committee. Um, nobody's contacting us. I don't know how much emails I sent to you guys. If you guys have a meeting with us, none of the arrests would have happened on Mauna Kea. If we showed you guys the laws, the documents, the TMK, and the jurisdiction, we wouldn't have the problem we have right now. We was proactive in our e efforts so that something like this wouldn't happen. Unfortunately, it did. And now it's bringing out every Hawaiian moral, ethical choices and decisions that we all make. And that's what it comes down to. Every kanaka is measured by their moral and ethical decision of who they are as a kanaka and who you guys are from your kupuna and also me. 2019, we went to Waimea DHHL meeting. We explained to the commissioners and chair, this is the jurisdiction. We own the road. We're putting up our tow boot. Thank you very much. He said, DOT owns the road. I said, no, 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 no. We own the road. We got to educate Kai Kahele, four meetings at Haleoku Hill about who owns the road. And that is not my research. I got to give it to um, the Homestead Association presidents on this island and their research that came before me. I'm just the person you can target right now. <laughs> 2019, um, after we explained to the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act and the chair that we own the road, um, they crushed our house, Haleoku Hill, a community hale. And all we was doing was volunteering work, all 50 percenters, because we're waiting on a list and our people are dying. They're dying. How come you guys don't look shocked or scared or like some kind of urgency? How come I don't want, I only feel like I get urgency when I hear of another kupuna dying on the list? That that's your guys' obligation to fulfill of the timeline of how you guys was created. And then the Kiki Library gets crushed where we like lock and secure some really expensive things. How can you go? We need to move forward. We need to work together. But we got to stop the lies. We got to stop the government corruption. We got to stop all of the negativity, the genocide, the Americanization that continues today in our lands, in all, all areas, economic, education, everything. So that's why I'm here today. And I would like you guys to, do you support the Beneficiary Trust Council and the communities of the Hawaiian Homestead Associations on this island and our work? Please raise your hand. Mahalo, I, I, I mean, mahalo. I mean, it's as simple as that. We kanaka face to face, aloha he alo. But we get some serious, serious things coming down. To criminalize our kupuna, heva kela. To do it on Hawaiian homelands, heva kela. To put them through the stra strain and stress of our kupuna leaders, cultural um, treasures. Come on. Why don't you guys stand in front of them and get arrested, please? Because our kupuna shouldn't go through that. I have no power, I have no money, but I spend all my volunteer time trying to help all my family members that bring up concerns. Uh, we need action immediately. Don't transfer the road from the beneficiary on Moku Okeave and beneficiaries to the Department of Transportation. Please don't support that. Um, it's our road, keep it our road. And 
We have the plan that we've been following, which is the Aina Mauna Legacy Plan. We have the community up there already to do the work. Just allow us to do the work and just stop law enforcement from harassing us, stop government from harassing us and attacking us, because uh, we need to save our people. Um, our people are dying, and it's very serious. Mahalo. Mahalo. Auntie Dachi Kapu, followed by Sandra Kirkpatrick. <laughs> 